You've got questions. Well, we have the man to answer those questions. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. What's the good word, Bob? Ah, so in my inbox is an email that goes like this. How do I know if my emergency fund is sufficient? And if I have a HELOC, is it okay to count that towards my emergency fund? This is a really good question. Uh, let me start with the second part of that first. Is my HELOC sufficient to count towards my emergency reserve fund? I generally would say no uh, for a few reasons. One is your HELOC could potentially be called by the bank. Now, it's unlikely that that will happen. But if there are ever economic challenges or, or, or problems, the bank may decide that it needs to limit its risk. And we saw a lot of that back in 2008, 2009, where banks started saying, all right, you know, we're, we're, we're not letting this money anymore. You've got to pay down your, your HELOC or so forth. So I, in, as probably more conservative than need to be, but I would generally not consider the HELOC part of your emergency fund. Now, in terms of how do you know whether it's sufficient there are some standard metrics out there. So most places say, you know, three to six months worth of expenses is kind of a, a standard financial planning um, framework, if you will, if you've got three to six months worth of your expenses. But I, I think that's a very general type of guidance. It's better than nothing, but your specific situation will vary. For instance, if you are a retiree, and you live mostly on social security and the pension and mostly guaranteed income, then for me, I think you're okay sometimes being a little bit lighter on your emergency fund because your sources of income from one month to the next are pretty stable. Now, if I were to go to the other side of the spectrum, you are a, a salesperson and you're paid entirely based on how much you sell. Well, what if you get sick? Or what if sales tank or, you know, like these types of things? Or what if you're in a uh, particular career that's very sensitive uh, to consumers being in your place of business and COVID comes back again? I mean, there are, there are all these sorts of questions that we have to ask ourselves. So if your income is more sensitive to potential fluctuations, or maybe let me say this a different way, which is the more your income can fluctuate, the more you may want to consider having a, a larger emergency reserve fund. Uh, I don't think it's imprudent for people with highly variable income or those who may have, let's say, seasonal fluctuations in employment to have nine months worth of expenses covered. Whereas those with more stable income, maybe you can go to the, you know, closer to the three month side. Ultimately, it's a, a good question. The other thing is how much uh, or what type of expenses are we looking to cover, right? Are you covered at least for your basic expenses, but if things go bad, you won't be able to eat steak, but you can still eat hamburger? Or are we saying you're not gonna be able to eat, right? These are, are different levels of, of security and ultimately how secure you want to be. Every dollar in your emergency reserve fund is a dollar that's not invested for the long term, So there are always trade-off costs to consider as well. Yeah. So I don't think people should wait for an emergency before they write to us. No, fund our account with your questions. That's it. Send them in and we need them right now. So give us a shout. Email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. We look forward to seeing your questions in that inbox real soon. Mm -hmm.